All right, today's video is brought to you by rockauto.com. Rockauto.com has been in business for over 20 years, and whether you're a mechanic, an auto shop guy, or just working on your car at home, everyone has access to the same incredible prices at rockauto.com. So if you're working on your car, I recommend rockauto.com. They have all the parts that you need, and they make it easy to find. So no more dealing with confused counter guys or stores that have the parts that you need and that are going to charge you massive store for markups. At rockauto.com, you can browse from home and know that you're getting the best possible prices for your car parts so if you're working in your car right now click the link in the episode description and go to rockauto.com for the car parts that you need at the best possible prices and tell them that Michael Bisping sent you there all right how are we doing everybody welcome back to the channel now listen if you're a UFC fan, if you watch UFC 268, then you saw Hamzat Chimaev go out there last night and absolutely blow everybody away with another sensational performance. Listen, look at the story of Hamzat Chimaev. That was his fourth fight inside the UFC and he's wiped the floor with everybody. But we're going to get into it. Before I do, though, please do me a favour. Subscribe down below, ring the bell, you know, you want to get notified. I'm going to be in New York all week with Brand Tendo. We're going to be giving you videos, delights, interactions, other stuff, behind the scenes footage. You don't want to miss any of it. Ring the bell. All that good stuff. Sorry, I hate asking or saying that stuff. Anyway, Hamza Chimaev, right, comes from Chechnya, came to the UFC, big reputation. Apparently, everyone says that he, you know, handles Gustafsson in the training room and things like that. And he lived up to the hype for three fights. On Fight Island, he dominated John Phillips and Reese McKee, right? And one could argue that perhaps they were stylistic matchups that favoured him, you know? So, and, you know, but they're tough guys. Reese and John Phillips, very, very tough guys. But he beat them, and he beat them pretty quick, easy in the first round. Then he fought Gerald Mirichart, step up in competition, and he catches Gerald 17 seconds. The first shot that he throws knocks him out. So, unbelievable, right? Then he gets matched up against Li Jingliang. Of course, between that, he was away for the best part of a year. And he got COVID. And a lot of people were worried that he was going to come back and not be the same fight. And not be the same version of himself. Um, well, he certainly was that. But going up against the leech, Li Jingliang, who is one of the toughest fighters in the welterweight division. Who has a habit of making everybody look bad. Li Jingliang is tough as they come. Right, and he was not intimidated. See him at the press conference, all that stuff. Li Jingliang's the real deal, right? And we were like, okay, okay, here we go. Now we're going to get to really see what uh, Hamza is made of. Let's see how he does against a guy like Jingliang, who's a big welterweight, a guy that's not scared of anyone. He's not intimidated, and of course has skills of his own. Well, he passed that test. He passed that test with flying colours. And you could have thought maybe he's going to take his time. Maybe he's going to, you know, feel his way into the fight. No, no, fuck that. He threw caution to the wind. He threw caution to the hurricane. He threw caution out the motherfucking window. He went up there, boom, shot straight away. Got hold of him. Picked him up in the air, right? And I was concerned for Hamza when he was doing that. Because I was like, oh, oh, he's using a lot of energy here. This is not going to be good. Because if it goes to the later rounds, he's going to be so exhausted. But as I say, he threw caution out the motherfucking window. He grabbed all the Li Jingliang. He picked him up in the fucking air. Got him over his shoulder. Walked over to Dana White. Had a little chat with Dana. He said, hey, brother, I am the king. Okay, nobody can stop my takedowns. I am the king. Give me title shot. Boom. And then slams him down. And then pretty quickly, we get the rear naked choke. And he's trending all over the place this morning, and rightly so. Hamzat Chimaev, right, for all any doubts that people had, this man's the real deal. And if you're a welterweight, watch your back. If you're Kamara Usman, who's the pound-for-pound -pound champ right now, he's paying attention. He saw that on Saturday night. He's like, okay, you know, we might have a little, uh, we could have an issue on our hands. We could have a contender. We could have someone that's going to give me a real fight. Of course, he's going to beat Colby at the weekend, which I think he probably will. But anyway... The point I'm making is everybody is looking at Hamza Chimaev. The guy's unreal. What a freak. And I mean that in a good way. You know, to have the confidence to go forward and just grab him like that, throw him down. And this is what he's done in every fight. Here's a crazy stat. Four fights inside the UFC, which as we know, the UFC toughest sport on the planet, right? You see people leaving the UFC. They're covered in blood. I've been there many times. I've, you know, I've got one eye. I've got, I've had my nose reconstructed. They took my ribs and had to rebuild my nose because it was destroyed inside. I've got fake teeth because they got fucked up. I'm covered in scars everywhere. I've got no knees. I've got half a neck. I've got half a brain. You know, I need other surgeries as well. That's what happens when you fight inside the UFC because it's the toughest sport on the planet, unless your name is Hamzat Chimaev. Because that guy now has had four fights in the UFC and he's only been hit once. 
Four fights, he has absorbed one significant strike, and that was against John Phillips. When he'd taken the back and he was about to choke him out, John Phillips was like, yeah, I'm one of them, because he's like, fuck it, I might as well get a dig in. So it wasn't even really a significant shot. You know, it wasn't a strike. It didn't even hurt him, which is wild. God bless him. That's what you want to do. It's the art of hitting without getting hit. You want to go out there. You want to take as little damage as possible. And he's shown he's not just a one-trick pony. You know, he knocked out Jared Mirchard with the first shot. The other three fights, he took them all down. At the post-fight press conference last night, people were asking him, said, you know, how are people going to stop your takedown? He said, you can't stop my takedown, bro. I take anyone down. No problem. And, and the guy's super, super confident, you know. And yeah, we have a welterweight contender on our hands for sure. But... He's not going to get to fight for the belt just yet. You know, I, I don't think that would be correct. You know, but certainly he needs another fight. Kamara's fighting Colby at the weekend. Sensational fight. I'll do a breakdown on that and give a prediction in a separate video. But uh, for Hamza Chimaev, one would assume that he'd be there at the weekend. You know, because UFC now are going to really get behind this guy and they're going to promote him because he's watchable. You know, someone like that that's watchable, that's exciting, that gather, that attracts people's attention, captures the imagination. You know, is this the new Habib? I know we're talking about Islam Mahachev. We'll get into that on another video. But 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 uh, Hamza, my God. And then on the microphone, he's really good as well. And then he's having conversations with Dana as he's hoisting somebody up in the air. We've never seen that done before. You know, I guess one time we did see it done was... Khabib Nurmagomedov at UFC 205 when he was pounding Michael Johnson right before he came him. He was having a conversation with Dana about, brother, brother, give me my title fight. Give me the chicken. Give me anybody. Right? It's crazy. But there is some comparisons we can draw here. Of course, he's Chechnya and Khabib was Dagestani. But whatever. You see, you see, you see the correlation. Um, one person that uh, Hamza did call out last night was Nate Diaz. He said, you want some smoke, bro? You got one more fight on your contract. You want smoke, bro? Let's go. Let's go. I give you a real smoke. Uh, if I'm Nate Diaz, with respect, <laughs> you don't want that to be your last fight in the UFC. If Nate Diaz is going to have one fight and it is going to be his last fight, you would want to fight someone that you can beat, and I don't mean to say that in a disrespectful way, but fuck me, you know, you would think that Hamza Chimayev would be the favourite coming into that one, and rightly so, you know, Diaz is as tough as the company, he's not the strongest guy, and he has had problems with big wrestlers before, so there we go. Uh, who would I match him up against? Because, listen, the way Hamza just attracts everyone's attention, the way that he fights, the way he's so confident... And the finishing ability. Four fights, four finishes, four quick fights. Only hit one time, son of a bitch. Um, he's going to get to fight for the belt pretty soon. But I think he needs one more, okay? And that'll be a five-fight win streak, and then he'll fight for the belt. That's my opinion. Who do we put him with? I don't think Nate Diaz. I don't think... I mean, I'd love to see it, don't get me wrong. But Vincente Luque. Vincente Luque is out there. He needs a fight right now. He's on a terrific streak of his own. Vincente Luque can get the job done everywhere. I think the last time we saw was Tyron Woodley. Great performance there once again. Well-rounded skills, good jiu-jitsu, right? Great striking as well. And he trains with a bunch of killers down at Sanford MMA with Henry Hooft. So, to me, that's the perfect. That, that's a great logical matchup. For Vincente Luque, it gives him an opportunity to take out somebody that's got all the hype. And then that would solidify the title fight for Vincente. And for Hamzat Chimaev, as I say, I think he needs one more. And that should be against Vincente. If he gets that done, then he fights for the belt. I mean, who else is there? You know, I mean, there's Leon Edwards, but he's fighting Masvidal. So Masvidal and Edwards are out. Colby and Kamaru, they're already fighting. Vincente Luque is there. Stephen Wonderboy Thompson uh, would be a great option and a fun fight. But uh, after Thompson just lost to Gilbert Burns, I'm not sure he'd want to go in there against another wrestler like that just yet. I'm not sure anybody wants to go in there with fucking Hamzat Chimaev. Jesus Christ, it's Halloween. Happy Halloween. And there's the fucking bogeyman straight from Chechnya. People should be going out dressed as Hamzat Chimaev tonight on Halloween because that was scared shit out of everybody i'm telling you that guy's fucking intimidating he's scary thank fuck i'm retired guys if you enjoyed the video do me a favor subscribe ring the bell take care and happy halloween you crazy motherfuckers